now we'll uh, have a few questions. Um, if you will please stand and state your name and affiliation. I have a question for Joe. In the documents, whether it's released by Structural Engineers Association of California or the peer, you know what the examples or what testing you are done doing in the labs and trying to uh, recommend how to model the nonlinear behavior computationally. You know, you're taking test samples which are basically having lateral, they're controlled by lateral or translation uh, de deformation. Real structures, whether as a function of distribution of stiffness or as a function of distribution of mass, there will always be higher modes in play. Very good example was shown by Farshad. Right? I don't think, you know, the, what, you are, what you are saying, taking, taking test samples from these simple things will apply to real buildings. When we are, so we have to have a much greater feel for it or much greater, uh, I'll say, uh, analyzing it in much greater depth than just the numbers shown by you, point one and point two. Uh, I have a supplementary question for Matthew. Matthew, you showed a structure and you coupled it and then you said you have achieved, a, you know, uh, your displacements have gone down by 70%. Very true. What probably you didn't mention is that the stress levels in that case will increase tremendously. Now, at what stage are you achieving concrete cracking? Now, if the guy is inexperienced and he does not model the concrete cracking properly, you land up with a building which is definitely going to come down in a seismic event, right? Thank Very you. true. But as I mentioned in my presentation, um, I did say that we would need to really pay attention to local effects as well. Although there are global benefits, we, we, one would need to pay attention to all uh, uh, local effects w w within the areas of high stresses. Okay, Joe, do you want to answer the other question, Joe? Yeah, um, I, I agree with the person asking the question that uh, laboratory research is always a simplification of the real situation. And laboratory research, though, does have tremendous value in determining um, local properties of elements, assemblies of elements. Laboratory research has to be used in conjunction with your building-specific analysis uh, such as these gentlemen have done with the PERFORM 3D model. So it, it's really a combination of analysis and your building-specific analysis. The other caution there, though, is that even your most sophisticated analysis will never incorporate all of the uh, effects of a structure. So we're always working with an approximation. Uh, with performance-based design, we're generally working with one of the best approximation tools we have, and that's nonlinear response history analysis. But the properties that we put into that analysis and the assumptions that we use in that analysis must be based on uh, real research results. And I, I know that I present a lot of research results that go against people's intuition. I think that you have to... Uh, evaluate everything with a critical mind, have uh, other pairs of eyes look at things, but a lot of times our preconceptions of what stiffness property should be um, are in conflict with what the research is telling us, and often the research is the right answer. Okay. Next question. My name is uh, Sabah. I'm from Kuwait. This is for the Atkin team. Uh, now, the building in Bahrain with the uh, wind turbines uh, never really worked. And when they worked, they were too noisy, caused a lot of vibration. What went wrong and what can we learn from that failure? Well, uh, I must admit I'm not aware of the failures that you're talking about. Uh, it's still uh, un undergoing commission tests at the moment, as far as I know. And uh, if there's anything you'd like to know, know about in any more detail, we'd be glad to supply you with that information. If there's anything specific. I am Subhash Mehrutra, Structural Consultant. 
My question is to the entire team of this performance based. In fact, our code uh, does specify and does mention the, what is the MCE. Then it specifies that we design uh, DB, the design based earthquake, which is half of that. And then we take care of the response reduction factor. And it allows that you do dynamic analysis for uh, 40 meter and above using response, redu uh, response spectrum method or time estimate analysis. Now, only problem is the code says, irrespective of the dynamic analysis, the base shear you get, you have to equalize based on the natural time period empirical given by the code. Now, my question is, we are facing this problem using energy releasing devices, whether you are also using the base shear equivalent to that, because that approximately a factor of 2, 2.5 works out. So whether in the performance base, you are still following the CODLA requirement, which most of the countries there, what are you doing? Because in any case, as per the CODLA requirement, we are bound to follow. Because anything happens, we are supposed to follow the code if we are to be free. Please attempt okay. any one of you. Uh, so, I mean, based on uh, all the work on uh, nonlinear analysis, etc., that we have done, uh, or that I have done in the past, and uh, <clears throat> based on what we have used with respect to the code, uh, one of the things that uh, there's a big difference as far as uh, the Indian code and the U.S. code. One of the biggest difference is the Indian code allows you pure shear wall buildings to go up to unlimited height, whereas the U.S. building code restricts it to. Un under some conditions to 160 feet and under some conditions to 240 feet high, and you cannot go above that. Now, based on the linear analysis that you're talking about with respect to the code, we have found that a lot of times these pure core wall structures are not properly mimicked by the linear analysis. The behavior is not mimicked, and the kind of reinforcement that you may actually end up with in certain locations may be as low as 40, 50 percent. And um, I mean, that's what under you know after not just one building, but this is after going to two, three uh, analysis of two, three buildings with nonlinear uh, time history analysis. That's what we we're figuring out. So uh, one of the things that we have to know is building behavior changes and linear analysis is an approximation to the nonlinear behavior that a building sees during an earthquake event, and that uh, we have to be rational about when we are using linear analysis and when we are not, when we are talking about complex structures such as what Atkins has done. The performance-based design is a very, very good tool to assess where things, you know, where exactly the nonlinear behavior is occurring and try to detail your structure properly at those locations. Okay, we have time for one more question. My question to Mr. Satish is that uh, do we have sufficient data for the earthquakes if we have to perform uh, nonlinear time history analysis in the Indian conditions? Uh, well, based on some talks that I've uh, had with a couple of uh, people over here in the industry, not in the industry. I know that, well, I shouldn't say in, the constru in, in our building industry, but in the Nuclear Power Corporation of India, they, uh, they have developed quite a bit of earthquake ground motion data for the uh, Bombay region. And there are some other uh, people who are involved with developing some ground motions for this area as well. So there is data that is available. It's just that we need to reach out to those people to you know, work on that. Uh, this question is to Joe. Uh, what kind of concrete material models uh, do we, when we model uh, the nonlinear dynamics analyses? Because that is one of the toughest things I Concrete material models? And, and by that you mean, say, stress strain models and confined versus unconfined yeah. concrete? Um, you know, I, the. I, I think that that's actually one aspect of our. Uh, assumptions that's reasonably well defined. You know, I think if you open the Park and Poly textbook from 1971 or 1978, that you'll find 
uh, some appropriate assumptions for confined and unconfined concrete. The analysis program Perform 3D is a fiber model, and it has the compression properties of concrete elements uh, involved in, in that. I, so, so I think that that's, that's usually an acceptable approach. Yeah. But, uh, you know, all of these things, including the question of whether you need to meet the um, prescriptive base shear requirements applicable to linear analysis or not, I think in the process of peer review, you need to define these assumptions. One of the other things that we require in California is that you need to identify every prescriptive requirement that you're taking exception to. If you feel that it is inappropriate to meet a prescriptive base shear limit, and in many cases it is because, in fact, linear analysis is irrelevant in a nonlinear responding structure, if you want to take exception to one of these requirements, you have to identify exactly what you're taking exception to and give a justification why. And that's your responsibility as an engineer of record and a peer reviewer's responsibility to provide their opinion on that justification.